countersink bevel angle is important. Ideally, the countersink bit is formed in a shape that it matches the bevel angle on the flathead screw. This is the bevel angle. Just give me a sec. There. This bevel angle here, this sloped part is the bevel and the angles on the bit and on the screw should ideally match, but they often don't. Not because they are badly manufactured, but because there are different screw standards. Screws come with different head angles. Some of them come with, let me just list it here, a 60 degree bevel angle. Some have 82 degrees in, uh, this is the imperial thread pitch. So uh, I just go UN, that means the Imperial, uh, Unified thread, thread Standards, that's what it is. Uh, there is 90 degree bevel angle and there is 112 as well as 118 degree bevel angles as well on the screws. So you have to match it with a countersink bit that has a matching angle. Now. In this video, I'll show you how to check the angles on your countersink bits. And I'm going to show you two ways. One is very easy. Just grab yourself a very inexpensive bevel gauge like this. And this kind of bits, and as well as this one, because the drill bit slides right out of this one, you can check it. On, you can check this bevel angle. This is bigger, it's easier to film on a very straightforward bevel gauge like so. Let me just get right up close here. There we have it. Sorry fellas. So, by holding the bevel part on the stock, this would be the stock, that's the blade. So, keep it in the stock or drop it in the groove. It's also good as long as you keep it parallel so there is no light showing underneath there just match it up like so you know that would be over that would be under this is gonna give us a it's not a scientific measurement but there that's about that's about gapless in both directions so it's gonna give us a fairly reasonable angle there. What you do with the angle, of course, copy it on a piece of paper. Very straightforward. Have the have the edge of the paper here. Let me just tilt this camera even further down. There the edge of the paper has to match the stock there and just draw a single pencil line on the paper just like that put a protractor on it and what do we get out of this thing it is there 96 degree how about that 96 degrees uh, maybe just let me just let me just fix this protractor 95 yeah so that it's lined up there and lined up there so we have 95 degrees there for this one so this is a 95 degree countersink bit. Now, do they manufacture a 95 degree screw? No. So what happens when this doesn't match anything? Well, this is how the situation looks like. This is just my caliper here. If the screw head, you can see it's got a bevel end cut on it. So I'm going to use this bevel if the bevel on the instrument doesn't match the bevel on the screw head which in case it's gonna look something like that just like so there's gonna be a gap there's gonna be a gap between the bevel that you cut here is the gap there underneath the screw head of course it's gonna sink deeper in but my caliper is only this thick here alright so but there there's always going to be a gap if the two bevels don't match. Now, if the two bevels match this way, that the bevel angle, in this case on the caliper jaws, is wider than the bevel angle on the screw head, 
then what's gonna happen as you drive this screw forward is you're gonna split the wood with it much like something like this because you're forcing it in and as I'm moving the caliper jaws so that's how the wood is gonna be split I think it makes a lot of sense there the other way around would be when the uh, when the uh, bevel angle that you make in the wood is uh, too too narrow for the angle of the head then instead of having a V gap that is that's tapering from that's tapering from zero to Y there here it's gonna be the other way around it's gonna be tied here and tapering there so if I wanna make a sketch it would be something like this this is the screw head and maybe a different color there that's what I mean it's the screw is gonna be having a V gap upside down there's gonna be a V gap here in this case it's not splitting the wood that much because the pressure is evenly exerted all around here uh, somewhere along the shoulder of course this gap uh, of course this uh, hole in the wood will be just wider and wider so the screw head sinks down to the correct height I just ended up drawing it this way but you get the idea this configuration doesn't split the wood so uh, this is fairly easy to get these angles checked with this bevel gauge but uh, but this shape what is it the third shape this one needs a little bit of a calculation and two measurements you're gonna have to measure the diameter of the the greater diameter the smaller diameter and you're gonna have to measure the slope length here along the shoulder somewhere use a use a micrometer if you have to or you can go with a caliper it's gonna be accurate enough and then you have to do just one easy thing on a calculator let me just show you how this works oh um, I've made with these three bits I made these three holes you can see this one is centered the best or most and because this one has the longest drill bit sticking out this one is, makes the biggest crater because the angle on it is different than what the bevel angle is on the shoulder of this one so this one makes the biggest crater and this crater is also off centered you can see and with this bit I made this third one it's oval and ugly because of the double fluted double fluted design it's a very sharp carbide bit but it's just it's got uh, too much of a too much of material missing on on account of double fluting so let's do some math here I wanna show you the math of with this one because this is the easiest okay you can see that the countersink bit is essentially a cone where you have a full diameter of the cone here and you have a slope length and the slope length here and the diameter will determine this angle here at the tip or that angle there it's a triangle so if I wanted to sketch this let me just get you up a little higher there about so sketching it would look like this one line another one and the third one so there's the countersink bit roughly we need to know this angle but we're not going to calculate that angle right away we're going to make a right angle triangle there and we're going to calculate just half of that angle and we'll double everything so this is just some calculation from this that's needed also for this they're very similar this is just two steps longer to calculate because of that central bit so what you need to do is once you have this great diameter here which in this case was I'm just looking at my cheat sheet oh it was 11.98 millimeters so half of it would be 5.99 here and 5.99 here that makes sense for we're calculating this right angle triangle 
and the length of the slope was 8.15 millimeters with this caliper super straightforward now we're gonna we're gonna do a sine cosine business here so if you remember SOC stands for sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse we're looking for this angle this is opposite that's hypotenuse super straightforward sine of an angle is 5.99 over 8.15 put in a calculator and you'll get an angle and then double it you're gonna get an angle then don't forget to double it you're gonna get 94.6 degrees for this drill bit here or a countersink bit now if you look at it this one also says where is it there somewhere let me just focus the camera just give me a sec just give me a sec I'm playing with the light here yeah you can see that's G E R M Germa Germany Germany okay so this is a 95 degree countersink bit it's a little too cratered out for the 90 degree European thread standard it's kind of crudely made and it's also not self standard not not self centering itself very well there 94.6 degrees is what I calculated and remember that we just measured it with this bevel gauge and with this Kitty, Kitty protractor and we got 95 degrees here when it was just done with a pencil line so this calculation works that's why I'm saying for the other countersink bit the this shape the calculation goes just two more steps to it here is the great diameter of it and then it goes up a little bit and then it has a central little mini drill part to it and that's how this looks like okay and it has a more more of a drill bit up top okay I hope this shape makes sense with this one in mind okay and of course it's almost the same shape you can complete the triangle here it's almost the same shape as was on the previous page you kind of get the idea but we can't measure the full length of the slope because we only have yay much of the slope that we can measure so we'll just calculate this angle here but this angle here is the same as this angle here because this smaller triangle is similar to this bigger triangle okay very straightforward business here and and then we have to double that angle so for this reason we need to know this great diameter here but that from that great diameter we need to subtract about this much here okay that, I hope this makes sense that from this diameter we subtract this one and then whatever we have left we have to split it in two ways there and there and then we're gonna get a number for that part the great diameter on this drill bit was 9.48 millimeters and the lesser diameter was 4.08 millimeters and this shoulder here is pretty easy to measure because it's because of the fluting here it's nice and crisp there straight line there from there straight uh, sharp shoulder it's not rounded if you try to measure the screw head the screw head is rounded the screw head is problematic the screws edge just give me a sec here with this focus on the camera up oh, there so the screws edge here is rounded so you don't get the full length of the triangle and it's a problem as well as the screw is also rounded here it's not it's not a sharp line between the screws uh, stem and head so the screw heads are really finicky to measure I've cut some off and I just I ended up cutting some off and just measured them with a bevel gauge they are imperial thread standard uh, so they are close to 82 degrees 
they vary between 77 and 85 something like that it's or 70 said between 75 and 85 because they are made with uh, by a process called cold forging and it's, uh, screws are made from a single piece of wire and when the head is formed just by cold deformation uh, the metal bounces back so if the forming die is 82 degrees it might bounce back to uh, less than that or so okay the screw head story so back to this math part that one is 4.08 that one is 9.48 so that leaves us with 2.7 on this side and 2.7 on this side and the length of this slope was 4.32 here doing the same sign business here you can just go on a calculator second function sine bracket this is how you enter this opposite is 2.7 over 4.32 is hypotenuse 4.32 close the bracket equals a number and don't forget to double it there 77.36 degrees for this countersink so it makes a narrower uh, trench it makes a trench that that looks like this so the 82 degree screw head fits always snugly in it there's not gonna be an unslight a crater that shows up it's gonna be underneath the screw head and this bit is less likely to or the screw countersunk bit this bit is less likely to split, split the wood than, um, than the than countersunk with a 90 degree bit Finally, what I have here is uh, this piece of wood, and uh, you see, just I just clamped these two pieces together, and there's my three holes. So if I take it apart, we can take a look at the cross section of these craters. So you can see that the first one on the left was made with this bit. It's matching that angle and that profile. The next one was this 95 degree. 95 degree bit, yeah, it's not centering itself very well. And this one was made with this bit here. Alright, so that's what I wanted to share about the calculation and these bevel angles.